In October of 2017, astronomers announced the discovery of a brand new kind of object. This object, as far as observations could tell, was unlike anything else in the solar system. It was coming in at a really weird angle. It wasn't part of the plane of any of the solar system objects. It was going ridiculously fast, more than fast enough to achieve escape velocity from the sun. And its eccentricity, which is a measure of how elongated its orbit is, it was, it was way bigger than anything else in the solar system. We had identified our first interstellar visitor. This object, which we ended up calling Oumuamua, which is a Hawaiian word meaning scout, and we got the name, by the way, because the observations were made with the PanStars instrument on Hawaii. This object, Oumuamua, came from the direction of the constellation Vega and is on its way out. Uh, we don't have a lot of data on Oumuamua. I need to say that right off the bat. We don't know too much about Oumuamua because by the time we saw it, it was already on its way out. It was 40 days past its closest approach to the sun. And just a couple months later, it was too faint to be observed with even our largest ground-based telescope. So we don't have a lot of data about this object, but what we do have points to it being absolutely fascinating. Oumuamua is weird in a very, very beautiful and fun way. It is unlike anything else in the solar system. It acts like a comet, but when it was close to the sun, it wasn't giving off a tail and outgassing like comets tend to do. Uh, so maybe it's more like an asteroid. Oh, but it's coated in like a red dust, uh, which is very typical of distant bodies in interstellar space or in the outskirts of the solar system. So that's cool. Uh, and also we notice over time that its brightness would dip and go bright in a very regular way. And our best guess for that is that Oumuamua is along it's not very big. It's like it's like a few hundred feet long. But we think it might be like cigar shaped and it's tumbling. And so sometimes we see it full face on. Sometimes we just see the pointy end. And so we, we get these very interesting variations in brightness. As it was on its way out of the solar system and we had those last few precious observations before it became too dim, uh, we noticed that it started to accelerate just a tiny tiny bit uh which which is a little bit weird so like the awesome thing about a muamua and this is our first interstellar visitor our first uh, a macroscopic object that we have detected and confirmed to come in from outside the solar system and then leave it's totally unlike anything we've ever seen before and how cool is that how cool is that uh since then we've seen another interstellar interloper, we actually expect, based on very rough modeling here, of the number of random objects that are just scattered throughout the Milky Way galaxy that will eventually encounter our solar system, we expect roughly one a year. So it's been happening forever, but it took until 2017 for us to spot it. And we spotted it accidentally, of course, because the greatest things in astronomy are always found accidentally. People have been studying Oumuamua for years, poring over that limited data, trying to understand the models of, of how such an object could form, uh, explain its acceleration. Uh, it's like so much cool science has come out of Oumuamua. But in 2018, Harvard astronomer Dr. Avi Loeb proposed something radical. He proposed... Based on the fact that Oumuamua on its way out had this strange acceleration, and you, when something's like moving away from the sun, you don't expect it to accelerate, but it was getting a little bit faster. Not much, just a tiny bit. He suggested that maybe it's a solar sail, that maybe it's alien technology, that maybe this is an artificial construct and the solar sail is there and, and light from the sun is bouncing off the sail and that's what's causing it to accelerate. Most, every other scientist in the world uh, pointed out that this, this hypothesis is, uh, while exciting, is a little bit weak. Because if you want it to be a solar sail, well, we know that Oumuamua is tumbling. It's, it's turning end over end. And so if you have a sail that's flipping end over end, it's not going to do a good job. As I imagine a sailboat that's just sitting there spinning. It's not exactly going to go very 
very far, very quickly. In response, Dr. Loeb uh, listed some mysteries of Oumuamua, and Oumuamua is full of mysteries. We do not fully understand all of Oumuamua. By the way, our best explanation for the acceleration is that it is outgassing, that there are uh, materials and pockets of volatiles like ices uh, that are releasing. Uh, Maybe Oumuamua is getting unevenly heated on one side than the other. Like, Orbital dynamics is a tricky thing, folks, and that's like a whole other show to just talk about the intricacies of orbital motion. Like, you ever wonder why we have such a hard time tracking asteroids and predicting where they're going to be? It's because this gets really tricky really fast, and tiny little changes can have big effects. But Dr. Loeb uh, proposed uh, or listed like six weird things about Oumuamua, and, and Oumuamua is weird, and He proposed and and recently released a book, hence present discussion about the topic, that we should seriously consider the hypothesis that Oumuamua is alien technology. Maybe not a spacecraft itself, but like a remnant or an artifact or just something intelligently created, intelligently designed, uh, that we shouldn't seriously consider that it's a natural object. Okay. Okay. Do I personally think that aliens are out there somewhere in the universe? Yeah, probably. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure, but I, I, it helps me sleep at night. I like to think that, they're, that we're not alone in the universe. Do we understand everything about a Oumuamua? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We don't understand a lot about Oumuamua. We had that very limited, narrow data set, like a couple months of observations. And not great ones because Oumuamua is super tiny and super dim and super far away. So it's hard to see. That's it. So very limited data. We don't fully understand Oumuamua. There are a lot of mysteries. Is it an alien? Is Oumuamua an alien spaceship? I don't know. I don't know. There's not enough data to say if it's an alien spaceship or not. But what's come out over the past few weeks, uh, as Dr. Loeb has uh, promoted his book and this discussion has reinvigorated, uh, are claims that that science is a, a mainstream science. So, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Loeb is the only astronomer who believes that this is an alien spacecraft or, or wants to take this hypothesis seriously. Uh, people, astronomers around the world who have been studying Oumuamua for years, Oumuamua for years, do not consider it as a piece of alien technology. They consider it as a natural object and are studying it as such. Uh, He claims that there is a bias against aliens, that we are hostile to the concept of aliens, that if we don't really know what a muamua is, because we don't have enough data to say what it is, and there's all these mysteries, all these things we can't explain, then it is incumbent upon us as scientists to at least entertain the hypothesis of aliens. I hope I'm representing Dr. Loeb's arguments fairly. My response to that is that science is not hostile to the concept of aliens. Science is not hostile to the concept of aliens. Science is hostile to bad ideas. Is Oumuamua an alien piece of alien technology? We don't know. Is the hypothesis, could Oumuamua be a piece of alien technology? Maybe. Is the hypothesis that Oumuamua is a piece of alien technology a good scientific hypothesis? That is a different question. This is different. One question is, what is Oumuamua? And the other question is, what is a good hypothesis? And in science, we like hypotheses that are simple, straightforward, testable, explanatory. Think of like the germ theory of disease or or evolution, natural selection, general relativity. These are actually relatively simple, straightforward concepts that have massively powerful explanatory power can explain all sorts of things, and you can test them. You can tell if they're right or wrong. That's what makes a good scientific hypothesis. 
Oumuamua as a piece of alien technology is not a good hypothesis because aliens can do whatever you want the aliens to do because they're intelligent, they're creative, they have access to uh, however many resources you need them to have access to. They have as much energy as you need them to have. Uh, they, can, they can do anything your imagination wants them to do. So when we encounter something like a muamua and it's full of mysteries and we do not fully understand it, it's very easy to fill in those gaps with aliens. Say, oh, oh, this anomalous acceleration, well, it's because it's a solar sail. Oh, oh, it's not really tumbling. It's, it's actually configured differently. Oh, it's made of some exotic material. Or, or, you know, just... An alien hypothesis allows you to explain anything. Anything. Folks, our universe is full of mysteries. Our universe is full of things we don't understand. We don't fully understand how the sun's corona is so hot. We don't understand the accelerated expansion of the universe. We don't understand fully how supernova go off. Now, we are trying to provide in science natural explanations for those, and we're not turning to aliens. We don't say that aliens make the sun hot. We don't say that aliens cause the accelerated expansion of the universe. We don't say that aliens trigger supernova. Why should we say that aliens caused a muamua? Why are aliens rejected in all those scenarios, but then suddenly become a strong hypothesis for a muamua? The answer is it's not. It's not a strong hypothesis. Aliens can do whatever you want them to do. And then, uh, Dr. Loeb has frequently said, oh, it's a hypothesis. Prove me wrong. Like, like, how do you know it's not aliens? And he says, I don't know if it's not aliens or not. But I do know what a good hypothesis is. And a hypothesis that is based on limited data, the only data that we will ever get about a muamua, and is designed, whether it's aliens or high-dimensional string theory or angels, like whatever you want to put to create a solution to all the mysteries for a muamua, if that's all the data we ever have, it's impossible to disprove because that's all the data we ever have. And the hypothesis was specifically constructed and was flexible and broad enough to be able to explain all of the observations, all the mysteries. So it's impossible to prove wrong. And a hypothesis that is impossible to prove wrong is not a good scientific hypothesis. Again, I'm going to repeat is a muamua an alien technology? I don't know. Is the hypothesis that a muamua is an alien object, is that a good hypothesis? No, it isn't. And that's the difference. I sincerely believe, folks, that if, that if aliens were to visit us or encounter us or we were to see some signal, it would be so manifestly obvious that we wouldn't even need the scientific method in order for, to understand it. That is the crux of my critique of Dr. Loeb's arguments. It's not about aliens. I love the concept of aliens. Aliens are fun and cool. And it'd be great to not be alone in our universe. But based on limited data, a couple months of observations, and some mysteries, that's not really enough to even raise the hypothesis that it's aliens. It's just not enough. So it's a cool idea and a possibility, of course, but it's also bad science. 